imagine with me if we're all on a spaceship on our way to Mars. So we're all the crew in here. Many things would have to be solved before we can take that journey. Uh, one of the things that we'd have to figure out is how to recycle carbon. We are a carbon-based life form, and we need carbon in order to survive. So the scientists at NASA worked on this in the 60s and 70s during the space program and came up with an interesting idea. They looked at using single-celled organisms, microorganisms, as a way of recycling carbon on board spacecraft using minimal resources, minimal space, minimal water. And here's how it would work. These microorganisms are basically like microbial seeds, if you, were, if you will. And they would capture carbon dioxide along with hydrogen from water and convert that into a nutritious food that the astronauts would eat, like plants do. And the astronauts would consume that, process the nutrients, and breathe out the carbon in the form of carbon dioxide, which the microbes would then capture, these seeds, and divide and make more food, and so on. And so a closed loop carbon recycle could be created for us on our journey to Mars. So we have a lot of carbon here on Earth before we leave and go to Mars. And as we go from 7 billion people to 10 billion, we really must figure out a way to recycle our carbon better. So a colleague of mine, Dr. John Reed and I, uh, looked at this NASA work and we thought it was very fascinating. And we asked the question, can we take this NASA concept using these single-celled organisms as seeds to produce foods at a large scale here on Earth. Uh, and happily, we found that we could. These microorganisms are natural, they're in nature, uh, and in the ecosystems where they thrive, they are nature's natural carbon recyclers. We call them supercharged carbon recyclers. Uh, and we have been able to make something amazing, a really nutritious protein, a protein flower, if you will. Uh, that is, has a really high protein content, higher than most plant-based proteins, rich in all the essential amino acids, rich in vitamins and minerals. Um, and it can be used to make a lot of different products. Beyond that, we can even make oils with this type of technology. Uh, something like a palm oil replacement, for instance. We call it Palm Plus. Uh, palm oil is an ingredient to many uh, of our products that we find on the shelves in our supermarkets from ingredients to desserts, you know, cookies and ice cream, to ingredient in pasta or cooking oil. And right now, they remove a lot of uh, uh, rain, virgin rainforest in order to make room for palm plantations. So with this type of technology, you can use CO2 to make a palm oil replacement instead of removing rainforest. So this may sound very science fiction-y, as you said, but actually, who in here likes Pinot Noir? Who in here likes beer? All right, a few people like yogurt. These are all the products of microorganisms. From the beverage industry to food products, every single spoonful of yogurt is a spoonful of microbes. We call them probiotics. Sounds nice when you say it that way. <laughs> um, but so at Coverti, we see an opportunity to take food production using microorganisms to the next level. From beer and wine and yogurt to proteins and oils. And we are commercializing our first products that are protein-based. Um, we're scaling up. We have projects that we're deploying in Canada and in Europe with commercial partners. We work with large manufacturers uh, who are the formulators that make the end products. And let me tell you about some exciting products that you'll see one day on the shelves as we scale up this technology. So you can imagine having your meat-free burger uh, that has a low carbon footprint. As you know, um, modern agriculture, including animal agriculture, is a large contributor to greenhouse gases. In fact, modern ag contributes more greenhouse gases to the atmosphere than our planes, our trains, our trucks, and our cars combined. So we can have meat-free meat protein products. Uh, you can also imagine having more things like protein-enriched cereals, and of course we can have protein bars, protein shakes, lots of ways of getting protein from a sustainable source. So we're commercializing this technology now. Uh, and another reason why this is a benefit is that agriculture takes a lot of resources currently. Uh, in fact, an area the size of South America and Africa combined has been cleared 
for modern agriculture. So this is a challenge, uh, and our technology can scale to produce products in less time, and as well as less land. And in fact, 10,000 times less land. Um, so if you were to clear the size of Texas to plant soy beans, the equivalent amount of protein that you get with this brewing, the CO2 brewing technology, you could make um, our protein with this technology. The same amount of land that would need, you'd need for with soy, Texas, you would just look at an amusement park, something like Walt Disney World. Um, that's the, same, the, the size that we would need for the CO2 brewing technology. So as we go from 7 billion to 10 billion people, we simply must do better. We must figure out a way to recycle carbon, um, use less resources, less land. And I'm really excited to be a part of the Unreasonable Group and the Unreasonable Fellows here. We've heard some amazing uh, technologies and businesses people are building to do that. And at, at Converti, we are a part of that solution as well as we commercialize solutions to recycle carbon to feed the world. Thank you.